Hello. So, we've seen now that we can approximate the area of a generic curve using at least one of three of techniques, right? This right endpoint, the left endpoint, and midpoint. But these are still approximations, right? So, what if we want an exact value, not just an approximation, right? We want it exactly sort of the best possible approximation being an exact number. So, how do we get that, right? Well, we've actually run into this problem before, right? How do you determine the exact value of pi rather than getting an approximation using that method of exhaustion, right? The crazy more and more and more sides to our shape. And perhaps unsurprisingly for a calculus class, the answer is going to be the same. We need limits. So let's see how sort of using a limit actually does give us an exact value. How do we know that we're getting exactly the right area and not just a really close approximation, right? We want, how do we know that it actually is the right number? So that's what we're gonna see next. Our goal is to find the exact value of the area under a curve, an area like this. We know we can get a rough approximation by putting in rectangles like this, but we can see that the approximation isn't perfect. Indeed, the rectangles include a bunch of area that they shouldn't. And moreover, they're also missing some of the area under the curve that they should. Now, in fairness, these two things do cancel each other out somewhat. Unfortunately, there's no real nice way to know exactly how much area is in each of these categories, though, without knowing exactly what the area is under the curve, which is obviously our goal. So, Trying to figure out the error here is inherently not going to work, since that sort of requires knowing the very thing we're after, at least on some level. So what do we do? Well, let's see what happens when we increase the number of rectangles. Now, when we compare the regions that are included in the rectangle and not the intended area against the area that should have been included but wasn't counted by the rectangles, it appears that we have smaller pieces all around, so our accuracy should be higher. In fact, we can make this observation even easier by looking at the rectangles from both graphs on top of each other. We can see that the more rectangles we use, the more of the area we want to include gets captured, and the less of the area that we don't want captured gets counted. So what if we use even more? We can see that as we increase rectangles, the estimate gets better and better. Just like the method of exhaustion, then, the key here is to take the limit of this process. As the number of rectangles goes to infinity, the width will go to zero, which means we will be counting only the area we want. No more, no less. This is how we get an exact area. At least in theory. Okay, so we saw right, by taking a limit of the number of rectangles, taking that limit all the way to infinity, we can actually get a perfect approximation for that area under the curve. We can get exactly the right value, exactly what that area is. And maybe unfortunately, <laughs> we saw that, you know, doing this limit is very much the same formula, but it does still look kind of terrible, right? So when we want to do that limit, we're taking the limit, right, this nice limit out front, of the number of uh, rectangles that we're approximating with, this n, we want that to go to infinity, which means, right, the number of things we're adding is going to infinity, and the width of each rectangle, this n and this n down here, right, that total width, b minus a over n, each of those things, those n's are going to infinity, so that width is getting infinitely small, okay? So, that is that.